Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca. I am an ichthyologist but also a PhD student specialising in evolution of lower cars, which are plecos. So today's topic I'm going to talk about pests and pesticides in the aquarium. So basically what we can do about pests and how we can handle them. So this is mostly ones that are sort of unsightly, um, sort of might be a nuisance within the aquarium rather than being pests on the fish themselves so parasites and other diseases because that's probably more of a uh, bigger topic in general so I've got sort of different pests listed and I'm going to really say about what you could do about them and really bearing in mind many aspects of the aquarium and fish keeping that can be affected by how you treat for these pests so of course for the first one is algae. Algae is a massive sort of, not even a category, it's a name that covers multiple different taxa. So the majority of algae are most closely related to green plants and these are known mostly I believe as the green algae. The other most common ones, you might see a lot of brown algae, I believe diatoms under that category. You might see the red algae and also the um, sort of very pest, -like, well this is probably one of the more annoying ones to get rid of and that would be um, cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria is actually placed in as a prokaryote, it's a, a bacterium as the name suggests. So it's not even like related in a way to that plant group or related to plant group that is the famous algae that we think of so much even though diatoms are very famous the majority of algae is really placed within this massive category we know that's uh, protozoa which kind of fills in the gaps between what we call other pro um, other eukaryotes so you're dealing with mostly a lot of taxa, different tax from different like pick and mixes that are largely photosynthetic. Not to say that maybe other taxa can't be photosynthetic um, beyond those sort of groups. Um, there's many protozoa that are actually known as heterotrophic, so they feed um, not just on light but also they eat like an animal um, or what would it be? Oh, um, anyway, so algae are one of the major issues we see in the aquarium. A lot of people really get bothered by them. Um, and I think it's because they can just appear out of nowhere. You don't need to really introduce them. And they just swamp the aquarium sometimes. And we're forever seeing photos of like pristine aquariums. The first thing I would say of algae is they are, we shouldn't view them so much as a pest. They can be brilliant indicators. So, like looking at all the pesticides or pesticide methods, do we really always need to use them? So first I'll just go over what you could do about them. Obviously biological. Um, you can, there are things that will eat algae and it depends on the tax of the algae and the tax of the animal to what they eat. The issue of this is that these fishes, shrimp, snails, other organisms all need their own care requirements, they need their own diet. That could even, if you're not really thinking about it, enhance the algae issues. If you're adding in more nutrients, that really could be pushing up the numbers of out. well, pushing up what the algae needs available to grow so such as um, you could be pushing up nitrate so just any sort of nutrition level that you might not be recognizing um, especially like think like plecos they are high waste they that could really be making the algae issues worse especially if you're treated trying to use them for algae that they probably aren't going to touch other things like shrimp or even like Many fishes are just very selective, and shrimp not being fishes, they're crustaceans. Um, they're very selective on what algae they will eat and the method of eating. It's like when you look at a grass field and you're looking at different animals for feeding on that grass. 
different animals will feed on different types of that grass and also to different extents. So some uh, will just graze on the top, the new shoots, some will dig right down and others might take different aspects of that grass. Um, so it's really probably not a great idea. So it's really not a great idea to really add in fishes, I would say, and these fishes can live extremely long times. Um, a lot of the lower cards are being into decades, so you're buying a animal which will be a problem for years and um, decades to come and outlive any of your algae issues if you maintain your aquarium properly. Snails and shrimp don't live as long. Um, snails, it really depends on the snails and I'll go on to snails a bit later because they can also be a pest. Um, you'll probably find you'll have pest snails in your aquarium already so and the way they feed is very much sort of a bit like the cars in a way because snails have this large tooth known as a radula and that will be scraping, it doesn't scrape away like entire portions Lower cards are probably a bit more efficient with larger portions maybe but it's still very sort of bitty um, snails tend to live, so my older snail is probably around 5 years uh, I'd say probably the older snails in snail groups uh, is about 10 years so they're not the longest living um, many snails will live much shorter lives than that but they can actually act as a problem themselves within your aquarium if you choose the wrong species and that's the same for fishes um, if we look at for example um, the Siamese algae eaters such as also the uh, flying foxes you've also got fishnet flying fox I'm using common names because I can't remember the others off the top of my head. I can almost recognise it when I see it, but not. Um, they could be real pests. Uh, same for Chinese algae eater. Even I'd say um, to a degree, um, what's it called? Gara uh, flavortra, or any of the garas. Uh, the rainbow, panda gara to lesser extent but they can be pests especially if they're kept in those lower numbers and they can still grow to some size so I would say avoid fishes and shrimp they're just gonna pick at the algae they're just gonna be like if you went in to get so just using like a child to pick grass and mo um, lower the level of grass they're just gonna pick one every so often and they although children won't eat they probably would eat grass but um it's just not practical and it's really you get a fish because you enjoy it there's better solutions out there don't get a fish because it will perform a function for you um, there are sort of I guess exceptions but algae isn't one of them so what about chemicals when we look at chemicals of algae we've got to know what algae we're dealing with and it is an algae not biofilm because people uh, mix up the two all the time and they do um, biofilms can include algae and um, biofilms are just colonies so um, they will um, include algae within that colony especially if they've got a sort of a green red tint um, but it could also depend on the bacteria protozoa present um, so chemicals I avoid chemical um, if you've ever read a read, read The Silent Spring and I think there's a follow-up book we know that chemical pesticides do increase the risk of having more pest outbreaks anyway and they do target species that might actually be helping with your problem or even stalling your like progress with the problem if you get what I mean obviously you can use like for black beard algae and that's one that not much uh, there's not much biological stuff that's going to eat that. Um, the, you can use liquid CO2. The obvious issue with CO2 is that CO2 is, while it's fine for plants and it will probably help plants compete with it, and that's probably another, if you've got a planted aquarium, maybe that is more biological pesticide element is letting the plants outgrow. But I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, chemicals just using um, you can use a liquid CO2 or normal CO2 
Um, with any algae, uh, personally, obviously fish, CO2 is toxic to um, animals, most animals I'd say. And if you're not careful, you could be making the situation worse. Are you retaining as much of that CO2? I'm not a fan of it and I don't see the need for it. There's other pesticides, um, I think some are actually copper based, which obviously affects other fishes in the aquarium. You're doing the issue of, like with disease, as I mentioned before, you're wiping out all but mostly the likely the most hardy taxa of algae and pests. So you're just going to end up um, with the most hardy and you're going to get resistance, especially the more frequently you do it. And I've not found they really make much of a difference. So, and you can't really, with integrating pesticides, it's really difficult because a lot of these pesticides more in the other groups will affect whatever you're using to manage it or unless yeah so anyway the main thing i think of algae is managing um, conditions both of my aquariums are as a system about five maybe uh this one this one i think might be about oh losing track I think this one as a system is about uh, seven years old and that one as a system about five years old and they don't get algae they do get biofilms and I know what causes them um, but they don't get algae they did get diatoms and usually sort of this level and you can always see quite a few lying around but I do not algae clean my idea is that you let an aquarium go through a succession and I've heard it mentioned in early stages of marine but then they just clean it um, and you build this sort of there is a haze over the glass and that is likely biofilms and over this time the aquarium's gone through cycles of different algae so I did have quite a lot of blackbeard that has almost entirely gone now apart from maybe on the plants that's likely due to I guess some um, ionic um, region of it's attracted a lot of nutrients, but it's just letting an aquarium go through a succession and the algae will be gone basically over time. It does take time, it is painful, but they're not that bad. And if you want a natural aquarium, I think algae are part of that natural aquarium. You've also got to think about conditions, maybe some algae really do have those preferences. My tanks are quite high like they are actually in the way the window will shine that gets direct light so it should be perfect for algae they also have next to no nutrients a lot of people promote the idea of no water changes and stuff like that I water change 50% twice a week I aim for as little to no um what's it um nitrates so I water change as much as I can so these are really low in nutrients. They're not great for plants either. I'll give that. Um, but I'm not try balancing that battle of plants for ourselves. I do have plex. I've not seen them on the glass. And if they were on the glass, I these ones I think they're not going to be the most happy buggers if they're there. Um, but it's just about letting in the creme go through the succession, just leaving it. Not like leaving the water changes, but not cleaning off that um, algae, letting it compete over time as the aquarium stabilises and then you'll probably get biofilms um, and I do have a lot and yeah there's one obvious one there and I really wish I had a microscope to put it under but well I do but they're not that good. Um, the other thing is when it comes to planted tanks algae obviously have more optimal conditions if you're really promoting that plant growth so really it's focusing on putting the sort of leaning it towards plant growth rather than algal growth but also maybe targeting it in a way that we know that plants prefer and those specific plants prefer over algae looking at maybe root uptake and 
stuff like that. It's really difficult because that adds in an extra battle with algae. Saying that, I'm happy not having plants. Plants aren't the most natural thing in freshwater um, ecosystems. It depends on the ecosystem, but many do not have plants. And they might have roots, it depends where you are, but... Um, or they might have plants like um, specific types, but algae make up that group. Um, of what they're going to take up that sort of real you're pushing against almost um, nature when you're doing a planted aquarium because naturally those ecosystems with algae biofilms that take up that niche they are competing with the plants and the plants aren't even in their ideal habitat um, depends on the plants as well obviously like Ballis, uh, Cambobia stuff like that they're in their ideal habitat but they're very fast growing and that probably is a major thing to think about getting plants that are fast growing will really add in that competition but algae are just i leave them be i lower my nutrients i'm not fussed about having a um ultra hunter tank i wouldn't mind but i'm not really it's not one of my priorities Okay, so next one, snails. Snails are, a lot of people really hate them and a lot of people don't mind them. I have no pest snails anymore. I did have a really bad pest snail issue. So when we're looking at pest snails, they tend to be either ram's horns or tadpole snails. Um, all sorts of ones, they tend to come in on plants, they don't always. I don't think they're an issue. So, the first, so looking at them but for I'm going to go over sort of chemical pesticides first. You can use copper treatment on snails. It will um, affect, possibly affect shrimp, possibly affect any ornamental snails, possibly affect any fish. Weirdly, whenever I've used it, nothing's died. Um, but I've never used it in my own aquarium. Because copper is really good against white spot as well. Um, so it affects quite a wide diversity of things and it might affect the sort of uh, biota in that um, aquarium. So a lot of people look at biological assassin snails are good. Um, the only issue is that assassin snails feed on the same problem that um, pest snails do. They feed on an excess of nutrients. So if you have a tank where you're gonna have waste food, which happens to be if you have laurel cards or discus, you're gonna get quite a bit of waste food. So I have an army of assassin snails. The issue, the other thing is, is that you can, there's other snails that can end up as pests and ornamental snails are the nightmare for us. So snails like assassin snails, pest snails, they're gonna be the ones that are most likely to be um, an issue um, from excess uh, food. But then you've got stuff like apple snails, mystery snails, Asloni spixi, and I had an infestation of Asloni spixi in both tanks. And they can feed on, well, at least Asloni spixi can. I don't think mystery snails are so much of an issue, but they will feed on plants. So you could take out the plants and that could probably help. But they also feed on the fish as food, just up it's been a sat there they're extremely fast so in a way i preferred just using assassin snails um because i tried any other method and if you can reduce the amount of food in excess that really would help um also another you can add there are fish that will predate on snails they do it to a very low level um and like the snails, none of them are special. So when those um, pest snails are gone, the assassin snails are gonna still be there. Um, pufferfish, pufferfish are the nastiest puggers ever. They will nip at fish. They can turn. Even the nicest looking ones, I've seen Mabu bite straight through um, other fish. And they are unpredictable. And they're reasonably long lived, so I wouldn't even attempt to use them. Loaches, long lived, boisterous, 
So they're gonna bother any fish that's slow moving and they can get to excessive sizes depending on the larger species like clown loaches, even yo-yo loaches, they're very boisterous and the smaller species aren't really gonna go for snails anyway. So really trying different methods and knowing what's the issue of your snail I think is the best thing. Adding in um, cucumber, courgette or snail traps just to bring out a large number can help. But generally reducing that uh, food source is the best thing first. If it's a snail that's going to survive on other things, then you might have to go a bit more like um, aggressive with uh, controlling them. Um, I also saw those snails going off, um, potentially being a risk with fishes, which is when I really had to get rid of them. Uh, so a few of the others, they're not going to take long anyway. A uh, planaria, planaria. I've not had in here. I've never seen it, so I assume planaria exists in low levels. Planaria. I mean, also a large number of uh, platyhelminths, which there's not a number. I think platyhelminths is the. I'm probably not, but some are parasitic. Some are not. Some are more detritivores. They can be an issue for iron shrimp and that's when they become an issue. Otherwise, they seem to exist at low levels, I assume, because they do appear from nowhere. And I think the major thing to do with those, um, uh, plate uh, with the planaria, is if you've not got an issue with, um, what's it, fry or shrimp, like you've got them in the aquarium, I would actually reduce feeding and see how that goes. And that goes for any worms in the aquarium, such as detritus worms. Just reducing your feeding will really make a massive difference. Um, and they will exist at those lower levels. They probably will exist anyway. There are chemicals to use, and you can use copper-based ones, which obviously makes an issue when you've got shrimp. So you might have to pull all the shrimp out, but that's not always an option. Um, and there's um, such a... I think the Isha one, that's or Esha, that I think is copper based. I think they all are. Um, but you can do preventatives like dipping the things before they enter a tank. Um, obviously, if you're using seed and media, there's an, you've already got it there. They could probably tran be transported in loads of different means. And therefore, also detritus worms. Detritus worms aren't actually going to be an issue of shrimp or um, what's it, or eggs, or fry, they're going to be more of an issue just aesthetically and they are gross, um, but they are definitely one that is a sign of excess nutrients. And I would say many algaes are when you've got stuff like, especially when you've got them in the sort of sand and substrate, they're congregating there for a reason. That's probably because there's something there that's making those conditions optimal, opposed to where there's brighter lighting, um, and also different bacteria as well. Turning over the sand also would help their tra avoiding trapping nutrients. Uh, what have we got? So we've got hydra. Hydra, I'm going to say they are an issue. We've got smaller fish, shrimp, but they do seem, I think I've seen hydra in my aquariums before and they seem to always exist at low levels. They are funky things and they can be treated with, with copper, but they're another one that is in excess of nutrients, but more, I would say, suspended matter is gonna really increase the chance of um, getting hydra, and also enhancing things that um, the hydra feed on. They can be a bit of a nightmare, but they are really amazing organisms. They're the closest you're going to get to a coral in an aquarium or a jellyfish because they are um, hydrozoa, they are related to jellyfish, oh, are they? But they're basically a, um, a juvenile form that has stayed that way. So uh, pedomorphic or neotinny is an, is an example of that. Uh, Next, I've got ostracots, bryza, and vorticella. You'd be lucky to see some of these. They are all signs of excess nutrients, um, excess sort of suspended matter, filter floss, stuff like that. Reducing certain foods will really enhance this stuff, like that really breaks down very quickly. 
Um, so Vitalis was a big one whenever I've seen that. But they will exist in small levels. Uh, Vorticella, I know I definitely have some. And I can't see any at the moment. But they're quite common. This light keeps flashing, it's really annoying. Um, so they're just reduce it. So filter floss is a really good method for that. Biofilms, just leave them be. They're usually a sign of excess nutrients or they're just part of a natural part of an aquarium. They're in your filter, they're everywhere. Just leave them be, I would say. And we do, generally all aquariums will have them. They will come and go with time as the nutrition changes and it will change even over days. And because it's more than just bacteria, it is rhizo, um, what was it, protozoa, maybe even some rhizoa. Um, also algae, um, etc. You're going to get, um, they're going to be quite quick in their responses but also quite quick at dying. They are brilliant food sources for different fishes. But anyway, if you've got any questions I can go maybe in depth on some of these topics, please ask um, in the comments or uh, the Facebook groups. Anyway, thank you for watching. And if you like my videos, please comment, subscribe and like and goodbye.